Thank you for staying with us. Now, it's been exactly two weeks since President Mohamed Buhari extended the lockdown in three states, that is Lagos, Ogun State, and the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. And since then, the cases of COVID-19 has risen to 1,273. This figure is based on the announcement of the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, the NCDC, on the 9th of the 27th of April, 2020. Will the lockdown be called off? Well, Chike Ikwazu, the Director General of the NCDC, doesn't think so, as he recently stated that the lockdown will not be called off anytime soon due to the increasing number of COVID-19 cases in the country. And still with us to have a conversation on this is a political analyst, Alexa Wilkerson in the studio. Thank you, Alexa, for staying with us. Thank you. And also, via Skype, we have Benga Onitilo, a political analyst. Thank you, Benga, for staying still with us. Thank you for having us. Nigeria on Sunday recorded 91 new cases of the novel coronavirus, which brings the total number of the country's infections to 1,273. According to the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, now, would you say these are new cases or were seen a result of increased testing, thereby we're having more cases being revealed? Benga? Well, I won't say, I won't say it's a function of, of massive testing. It's not. We've um, so far, we've done about, if you check the World Odometer and also check the NCDC side, you'll find out we've done about 10,061 tests, out of which we have 1,273 active cases, which is about 12% of the total cases that we have. You also have about 40 deaths out of the 1,273, which is just about 3%. So far, if you look at the number of um, testings we've done, um, based on per million people, you have done close to about 40 by every one million, which is not uh, impressive at all. Because if you go as far as Ghana, that has a population within the range of about 60 million, where ours is 200 million, they've been able to scale up and do have a test that run as far as about 161,000 tests. And that's where the issues are. If you look at the trend of the numbers, Anybody that says, that understand data and how data works, we know that if this data goes on like this, there's a high risk ahead of us. If it goes on like this, that you have, um, let's say, for example, you run 100,000 tests. If you run 100,000 tests and you have 12%, if you have 12% of that, it means you have, you have about um, uh, 1,000 to 1, 12,000, uh, what is that, I think? 10% of that is about 10% of, let's say you have 100,000 tests. 10% of that is about 10,000. So if you have 12%, just statistically now, you will have 12,730 people cases. And when you do 3% of 12,370, it shows you the number of deaths that, that might occur. So if you look at statistics, we have not been doing well. We have not done well at all. When we look at the percentage in terms of the population size, in terms of testing, because the greatest challenge with um, this virus are the people that are asymptomatic. These are the people that have the virus, can spread the virus, but will not show any symptoms. How many of that are we been able to quarantine? I'm not saying isolate now because they are two different words. When you say quarantine, it doesn't mean you isolate them in an isolation center. It means you keep them off people that are healthy, kind of, so that they don't spread to them yeah. and the things begin to spread. So okay. we have not been able to scale. Our strategy also of testing is more like about those that show signs or symptoms. All right, Benga, just hold, hold your thoughts right there, Benga. I'll come to you in a bit. Do, do you want to agree with Benga or do you disagree with him on saying that he doesn't think it's a case of um, increased testing and um, so we're having new cases? No, of course, it's, oh. of course it's increased testing, certainly, because yeah. it is the more you test that, that you discover uh, more, uh, so it's, in, it's safely increased testing because I start. Um, does that mean in any way that our testing capacity has, has increased? No, no, over certainly, the days? no, certainly it has increased because we used to have just three before. Uh, it was scaled up to about seven, and I think additional three has come on stream. I, I think the but problem really was the fact that uh, we were testing. never prepared for this. Even when, uh, well, just like the entire world, because it's really and even America, but because they had a faster means way of uh, getting things done. Uh, they, they, they were able also to scale up their capacity. Um, Nigeria was lagging. Uh, I think maybe Nigeria could have even asked Ghana, uh, maybe share, share with Ghana how they, had, uh, they were able to achieve that massive... Uh, uh, they have had about uh, 50, over 50,000 
test with uh, about uh, over 100,000 now. 2, 000, yes, I, I, don't have the, I don't know the latest figure. Nigeria has gone far beyond the Nigeria has gone far beyond the 10,000 mark that Gwenga was talking about. Uh, no, Nigeria I, has not. As I, I yesterday night, it was 10,061 tests. I, I don't Nigeria know. Nigeria has new, not gone beyond that. I don't know. Check the, the world autometer. It's okay. Active, I don't know public. the new. I don't know the new this thing today. But but be that that is me, um, I agree. It's slow. Um, it's not slow. It's ridiculous. Well, uh, Gwenga, let me just make my point, sir. Gwenga, we'll come to you in a bit. Yes. It's slow. It's the, 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 the information to the people are too scanty. The lockdown has not been used to, to come up with any formidable strategy. The information to the people has been so scanty. So which, scanty. which is another issue we'll, we'll, we'll delve on before we wrap up this segment. Now, Gwenga, do, do you think we'll see a possibility of an accelerated stage of more confirmed cases in days to come? Now, you think... It's ridiculous, the, the, the capacity of our testing rate. Now, let, let's, let's consider the accelerated stage because there's something called as that. Now, many people are hoping in days to come there'll be flattening of the curve. But many health experts are saying we've not even experienced yet our accelerated stage. I need your thoughts on this. Uh, uh, at Benemark, it's only maybe if you are doing inside PlayStation stuff, maybe you can have a slowdown on the curve. But if you go and learn from the Far East Asia, and uh, on the Far East Asia, South Korea has had the best model and has been very effective, which Germany has also borrowed from and learned from. Most of the Far European countries like Slovakia, Poland and co, they've learned also from this strategy, which is the same thing Senegal has done as well. Ghana has done, Djibouti, South Africa. So the number of testing you do per your one million population helps you to be able to project. You gather data that you can plan, you can project, you can localize the spread of this thing. We have only done 10,061 as at yesterday, 12 midnight yesterday. If you check the world odometer, we have only done 10,061. Some people are saying our testing is more effective. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the numbers. When you, when you do that in terms of the numbers, you know I said earlier about asymptomatic people. It means you can actually quarantine those people and take them away from the elder population where you now begin to do massive tracing in terms of people they've been exposed to. So our strategy for testing, look at what the DG of NCDC said. He said they, they are now sourcing for materials for testing. Does that not scare you? Now, you did say it something right don't, yet. Yes, Mega. You just did say something where you're coming it, on. Hold on. Many people have expressed... He just said... Yeah, Mega, just hold what? on. Hold your thoughts, Zach Mega. Many people have expressed their doubts in, in the figures the NCDC seems to put out on the daily. Yes. And they feel that the government is not completely tr truthful about you know, how they're handling this pandemic. And yes. you also t did say that. Now, yes. what, what do you think is going on? Yes, a lot of, you see, a, there's a lot of skepticism in, in, I mean, with the population, with the populace. Because sometimes I am not, I'm, I, I, I'm a very good optimist, uh, optimistic person. I don't want to go that line. People are saying maybe some of these figures are sexed up and uh, in order to keep, um, um, to keep, uh, the process on on cause, and I which, which really I would not want to uh, uh, go to that line. But the influence of the government really, from the government is really really small, slow, uh, terribly slow. Um, the level I don't know the I don't know what quality of text the, uh, the Gwenga talked about that they are talking about. I don't know. I think the way Ghana was especially the Ghana their test, whatever model that they use, is a matter of sharing information. I the NCDC has not done a good job. In, I mean, in this, in this regard, the, the, the strategy is not very clear and the people are confused. For instance, you are looking at Lagos, Lagos, Lagos case, Lagos now. Yes, I agree that uh, uh, Gwenga Sadisis might have some little variations because there are epic centers, there are non-epic centers. Yes. Lagos has an epic center. Lagos has an epic yeah, center. Yeah, with, with uh, 22 million, with uh, 22, 27 million people population. Uh, you don't compare that to other areas where there are no, where the cases are two, one, and so the percentage as it may be very, very, uh, might, might be different from what Benga has given on, which is, if you're taking the, if there was a, 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 a spread, if there was a spread yes. across every state of the Federation. Okay. Now, the, 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 the actions that the governors have taken in locking down state boundaries, the state boundaries, the state boundaries yes. is so that there is no spillover from the Epic Center. I'm sure Lagos is the target. No spillover from the Epic Center so that we don't know who, carried, who, who, who had it in Lagos. So I, I am optimistic to the fact that uh, the NCDC, they've not done well, but in the next few weeks, they should scale up. 
whatever be the strategy that they need to come up with, because these four weeks of total lockdown of Lagos had not given any clear cut strategy. We we'll just keep hearing figures jumping. I mean, the last by, by the time the first lockdown came about, we were at about 100 and something. Before, by the, then the second, the second two weeks came, we were 300 and something. Now by now by now by we are 1,200 well, and something. Thousand, yeah. So, so what? So. People, people need to get more information as of as, as okay. even me. I'm people, confused. At people some need point. to get more information. More information now, about this, so some of the people very suspicious of the of the government and their dealings um, of the pandemic. Isn't that already a mitigating factor already? Uh, what do you make of this? Uh, yeah, basically, like I was saying earlier, most of the data are rolled out. They are not my data. They are data that are open source. NCDC websites. You get it on World Odometer. The figures are there. So it's not my figure. It's active data that is open source. No, I mean, now, I mean as the variation. Part, so as the variation. Part, Bing, I mean the given, variation given, given is the states. states. The yeah, variation, the variation is states. states. Lagos Epic Center, Abuja Epic no, no, Center. No, no. You don't see no, River State I'm not or Delta as Epic I'm, Center. I'm, hold on. I'm not talking to you about Epic Center. The question we are asking is, all these states that we're talking about, yes. how much of tests have you run in these states? The tests that we are doing, we're only testing people that are showing signs and symptoms. We are not scaling up the stating. Because right now, you are already at the stage of community spread. If you are at the stage of community spread, you need to scale up your testing in every community. Scale up your testing and scale up also your tracing. When you do that, you have the numbers. When you have the numbers, you can project with those numbers. You can plan and allocate resources. Like, um, I agree with Alice because that in terms of strategy, NCDC seems not to have a strategy that is effective. Then it's flawed. There's something wrong with that strategy. So that's why the strategy needs to change. Then you need to allocate more resources. Now they're saying they don't have test kits, test materials. So we're now even more challenged. In fact, he is talking about we should scale up. How do you scale up when you don't have the testing materials? This is science. Science. In science, if you don't run tests, you don't do experiments, you cannot show any optimism. You cannot be positive. This is science. It's not politics that we're going for election like INEC and people can play what. This is science. The results will show within 5 to 14 days if you don't do what you are supposed to do. And don't also forget, our health sector is weak. We don't have personnel. We don't have the resource. We don't even have the number of beds if things go out of order. I read out the statistics for you earlier. 12% um, or you have only done, been able to do 12% of the total people you have tested, you have 12% active cases. Imagine if you follow that statistics and do 100,000 tests, which means you have 12,730 people, active cases. Out of that, another 3% out of that number of deaths, maybe about 360, 400. Do we have the capacity to manage that? So that's why we missed the window of making the, term, the, the first four weeks of the lockdown effective. We lost that opportunity. Now we are going to extend again. We want to hear something new, something we have never had before okay. in terms of what right, NCDC yeah, will be doing, what the Benga. states and federal will be doing. Yeah, interesting you did make mention. Um, and we're still, we're still not certain of what the president's address is going to be to the nation by 8 p.m. tonight. Now, Nigerians are eagerly waiting to know if the lockdown order by the president will exceed today, April 27, despite an increase in cases of coronavirus cases across the country. Do you think there should be an extended lockdown? And... Don't you think this will bring about a revolt and tension in some states, given already the situation we're in? Quickly, Benga. Well, for me, you, you now have to be a bit more strategic in the kind of lockdown you're going to have, on the next phase of lockdown you're going to have. Do, do, you, subscribe, economy, do you subscribe to an extended lockdown? You, a relaxed lockdown in terms a relaxed of strategy. Lockdown. Because you need to scale up the economy, you need to scale up people earning power. So there has to be a kind of lockdown that is a bit more strategic and uh, that is a bit more strategic from key business areas need to be opened up that you need to have regulations in terms of how will ensure you enforce things around social distancing people wearing masks watching events interfacing with people how you are going to achieve that in the next one in the next two to four weeks those are because you need to start scaling up your economy gradually we are a, we are not a productive economy we are import dependent we produce nothing we depend on everything from overseas who well, we cannot follow the strategy of the west in terms of complete lockdown we cannot our strategy must be homegrown must be one that will suit our realities and must suit our peculiarity 90 percent of people every day must go out to earn money to eat 
that's why we must do something peculiar, not this law and copy and paste that we are following. Right. It's not going to happen. anything. What, what's your take on that? By yeah. 8 p.m., the president addresses yes, the will, nation. Uh, yes. yes, I think I'm, I'm, I'm in sync with Benga on this. A relaxed yes. lockdown. Yes, a relaxed lockdown. There, there is the need for some uh, uh, control, control of the of movement and all whatnot, but a relaxed lockdown. Um, Maybe uh, a lockdown that will because even this we, we just have a need a but, coffee a, a place no, for no, coffee no I think uh, uh, well coffee comes up in the night in the evenings uh, so uh, yes coffee might be part of it so that to to depress uh, this, to to control the movement in the evenings but what would that achieve if you've already moved all through the day so what, what so what Benga is suggesting I think is, is for me is quite up in the last lockdown certain critical uh, aspect of the economy needs to be opened up people need to uh, go out to make livings and all whatnot. But in this kind of relaxed lockdown, the regulation must be tighter. Right. Those who must go out must meet certain regulations and certain conditions and certain, and, and certain protocols so that it is not a, a, a license to get yourself reinfected. Today when I was coming, I was surprised. Lagos Island being the epic center in Lagos, with, no, Lagos mainland being the epic center in Lagos, I mean, I saw, we passed through a Bute Meta area and I saw how People were just mingling and no social distance. We're just mingling and mingling and mingling. And that is the area where you have the big highest, I mean, the epic center for Lagos. And so if even this lockdown, has it achieved much? Has it in sync to the people? Some of the protocols that are supposed to, that the lockdown was supposed to achieve, I think it has not. Maybe right. just find policemen on the road harassing people that goes that. What of the hinterland? Even in my, in my, in my, in my show, people just mingle themselves and all whatnot and everything. So, there must be a, a, a relax. There must be some element of control. Right. A relaxed lockdown. Political with analysts, a higher, with a higher protocol. Wilkos, thank you for joining us on Plus Politics tonight and for your it's great contribution. Thank you very much, Mr. Benga Onitulo, political analyst. Thank you very much for joining us. And, all right, thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you for staying with us. We'll take our Plus report now, and when we return, my take. Stay with us. The Lagos State Government has consistently updated its residents about the efforts of the state and today was no different. The Governor Babajide Sonwolu in his brief today touched on a number of salient issues. One was the need to decongest mortuaries in Lagos State. The COVID-19 lockdown coincided with the end of the Lent season, which caused many families and households to further suspend or put off their funeral plans. Because of this inability to hold funerals occasioned by the restriction on movement, our mortuaries in Lagos State are now getting to the peak, and there's a need for us to have a decongestion. Let me make it clear that these are not COVID-19 death in any form. The only reason the mortuaries are getting filled up is because funerals have not been held in the last two months or thereabouts. Let me now make it clear that funerals are on the list of activities exempted from the lockdown restriction. You can hold or attend your funeral ceremony in Lagos State as long as you comply with the requirements that we have laid out. The governor also announced that he signed a release order for 209 inmates remanded in various correctional centers in the state. In exercise of my powers confined on me by section 212 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended. I have this afternoon, following the recommendation of the Advisory Council of Prerogative of Mercy, signed a release order releasing 209 inmates reminded in our various correctional centers in Lagos. The number of COVID-19 cases in Lagos State has risen to 670. This was said by the governor who gave updates as regards the fight against the virus in the state. As at midnight yesterday, April 24th, 2020, Lagos has a total of 670 confirmed cases of COVID-19, an increase of about 278 cases within the last four or five days. These numbers demonstrate the following. One, that we are firmly in the community transmission phase of this pandemic in Lagos. This is not a time for us to relax or slow down in the efforts to making our total effort at breaking the chain of transmission of the COVID-19. However, 
on an uplifting note, yesterday, I'm sure you are aware that we discharged a total of about 10 patients. Today, I'm aware that some other patients too are being certified right now and they'll be discharged later today. The efforts of the state government is commendable as we hope the citizens abide with the existing laws concerning the lockdown. Adebanke Odunui, reporting for Plus TV Africa. And here is my take. The new coronavirus has claimed at over 200,000 lives since its outbreak in China in December 2019. In Nigeria, the country's total deaths from the virus now stands at 40, with a total number of infections at 1,273. And Lagos, as the epicenter of the virus, has a record number of confirmed cases at 731, according to the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, the NCDC. I do agree and understand with the public health implications and the imperatives for wanting an extension of the lockdown in some parts of the country. I think it is also very ponderous to accentuate the fact that the three states currently under total lockdown are the economic administrative action centers of Nigeria. In my opinion, if there is an extension of the lockdown by the president, then we have to take it in utmost good faith and trust that this is coming from a good place as it could potentially reduce the rise of coronavirus in Nigeria. The cases in Nigeria is currently on the rise and quite worrisome. However, while I believe that Nigerians should be patient and learn to sacrifice for the sake of the country, I also believe that more than ever before, there is a need for a comprehensive palliative measure which should cater to all Nigerians, especially those regarded as the poor of the poor. And the sad reality is that people in this country are hungry and living in poverty. Even before the pandemic, how so now that two major states and the FCT might see an extension on the lockdown? In good faith, I'm hoping that the president's address will give hope and bring relief to all. And my message to the president is this, a lockdown is still not a complete and effective solution. We need more comprehensive homegrown solution to our peculiarity as a nation. While I have to applaud the government for being proactive so far, I also have to emphasize that the palliative and stimulus packages should be more comprehensive at this time and be best served through consultation with social partners. I ask Nigerians to please be patient during the season. This too shall pass. And if you will, please reach out and help those around you. Our humanity is in caring for one another. We will conquer this. And that's all for tonight. Thank you for watching. Plus Politics returns same time tomorrow. In the meantime, stay safe.